welcome back to this session so in the today's part of the session i think we shall go for discussing some of the concepts related to the laboratory analysis of the sampling in the laboratory analysis of the sampling whatever the different types of the samples that are to be collected and what is the procedure that they have been followed either for the collection either in terms of in water or in terms of in waste water okay the theoretical principles are necessary to understand the process of how the samples are to be collected in the previous part of the class we have discussed related to what are the sampling what is meant by sampling okay especially i am talking related to the laboratory part of an analysis which you going to come across in the conduction of the experiment in the future part of the days okay now in this regard the sampling is mainly classified into three types the term sample it mainly refers to the representation or the collection of the substances or the material relatively at a small volume that collection of the substances relatively at the sample or the small volume it has to represent the realistic features but highly it is impossible to imitate the realistic features so therefore there is a consideration how we need to come across for the measurement and such kind of the things and all so first one is the choice or the method of the sampling okay so these are the methods of the sampling that we have come across so first one is mainly related to the manual sampling second one is automated sampling third one is sorbent type of the sampling the term manual type of the sampling it mainly refers to the collection of the samples at a place either it may be a waste stream itself also or maybe an industrial waste that what we call it as a streams or maybe a rivers or into a lake itself only so here manually means a individual person who is a skill or maybe an expertized person along with his colleagues or maybe any other co part of this workers they are going for collection of the samples okay that methodology we call it as uh, manual sampling in the places where they are inaccessible in nature that kind of the sampling has to be done relatively to collect the data which in turn it is difficult to go there itself only that manual part of the sampling is not completely done so the erroneous part will be much more in nature so therefore in order to avoid that errors while collecting the samples okay that to minimize the error we have a next kind of the sampling we call it as automatic or what we call it as automated type of the sampling the automated type of the sampling mainly refers to the collection by the aid of the instrument by the aid of the instrument or by the aid of the equipments we go for collecting all those things either for the water or maybe for the waste water or kindly if we go for a water quality monitoring analysis over a period of the time say for a period of one month or a days or maybe in terms of an years itself only continuous monitoring is done if you go for looking on for the cpcb or maybe kspcb you have a lake monitoring system also or maybe water quality monitoring status and if you going to take in the case of the air also you have the air quality monitoring status we come across national ambient air quality standards central pollution control board that is the indian standards so these are the things that we go for coming across with respect to the automatic as well as the manual type of the sampling okay therefore the sensors or the instruments are being placed by the usage of the internet of the things or maybe for the data set are being collected next thing it is a sorbent type of the sampling so for the samples which are been volatile in nature they cannot be captured easily that kind of the samples are to be taken through the usage of an adsorption okay so that process where the adsorption that means accumulation of the particles or maybe any of the liquid that taking place on trapped onto the surface of the material so due to the van der waals force of an attraction so therefore that kind of the sampling we call it as a sorbent type of the sampling hope so you people have understood the methods of the sampling now we, in this method also we can go for the types of the sampling what are those types of the sampling namely we have a grab sampling 
composite sampling as well as integrated sampling. What is the term the grab sampling it refers to? The term grab sampling it refers to collection of the samples at a one particular period of the time itself only. That kind of the sampling we call it as grab sample. In environmental engineering analysis whatever the samples that we go for collecting it is normally a grab sample. So a sample which is being collected at a what one particular instance of a time we call it as a grab sample. For example, if you have collected today at 8.30 in the morning or maybe in the evening time, that kind of the sampling we call it as a grab sample. Next, whenever there is a variation of the samples, so therefore the grab samples has to be collected maybe during the variations, that means not the same sample, a separate grab samples has to be collected. That we going to call it as the conditional type of the sampling. Okay. And in the next part of the regard, we come across it is composite sampling as well as integrated type of the sample. Okay, now coming on to the grab samples. So therefore, the samples which are being taken at a particular instance of a time. Okay, this particular instance of a time. Next thing, composite samples. It represents the grab samples or the samples which are being taken in at a regular intervals of a time that we call it as a composite type of the sampling. Okay? The composite type of the sampling means for example today at the 8.30 morning you have taken tomorrow you have to take at the 8.30 morning itself only on a regular basis if you are going to take it on a daily basis or if it is in terms of an uh, weekly basis or in terms of an hourly basis that kind of the samples are also being allocated here. That particular instances where the mixture of the grab samples which are being collected over a regular intervals of a time we call it as a composite sampling. Okay. Therefore, either maybe at a one particular intervals of a time, maybe if you are going to take a three samples at the three different hours in a day. So, again if you need to come back to take again three different samples in the next consecutive days and all. That is a one type of the composite sampling. You can have a daily sampling, hourly sampling, weekly as well as bi-monthly type of the sampling as well as monthly type of the sampling but not like an yearly. because. The monthly it is only for in the rare cases but whatever in the case of the water as well as the wastewater analysis the sampling category differs because water it has been less contaminated and the number of substances which are being present it will be slightly less. If you are going to take in the case of the wastewater therefore the number of the contaminants or the pollutants which are being present or where it has to be carried out in that particular stages you need to collect the samples and analyze it in a quicker manner. So this kind of the monitoring has to be done. Next integrated samples. Integrated samples means the mixture of the grab and the composite type of the samples which are being required on a regular intervals of a time if not in the regular intervals also at that particular instances it has to be in an equivalent nature. So we call it as a weighted mean method. Okay, so we call it as a weighted mean method. Normally the harmonic mean is nice here, With that kind of the samples we call it as an integrated type of the sample. Type of the samples normally it refers to the samples collected from a different points in a simultaneous manner. So therefore if you are going to have a case of a pond or maybe a river itself only that is a different case. So pond means so at the same instance of a time 5 or 6 or 8 or 10 persons who are being collecting the samples at the same particular instance of a time that we call it as uh, integrated samples. Okay, Location, place and where you have collected the samples are to be written up. Okay, this is the one particular instances that we are going to take in the case of the pond or maybe in the case of the rivers and all the sampling has to be done along the center line. Okay, this center line is a position where you need to determine what is the concentration that has changed due to the release of a substances whether it is a instantaneous release or maybe a continuous release. Instantaneous release means 
it is not continuously released or the effluent is not been released or the waste water is not been released in a particular in that means in an instance of a time okay if it is continuously it is released 24 bar 7 then we call it as a continuous intermittent is nothing but the instantaneous release suddenly they are going to release and they will be going for stopping it this kind of an analysis are to be taken up we have a different set of any equations also to, to study especially people who have been taking up any other uh, projects or in the any of the models also if they go for studying or are interested they can go for it we can go for helping it next what are the requirements of the sampling I hope so you have understood manual automatic and sob and sampling the next is the grab sample composite and integrated samples here, what are the major requirements of the sample? First most important thing it is, the requirement it has to meet the standards. That means standards which have been set for the collection of the samples. Next important thing it is whenever you go for collecting or maybe if you wanted to take the samples and all please make ensure that which kind of the container that you are going to take it. It matters much ok. So type of containers that you have taken out and make sure that if you are going to ch check for the water analysis so different. If you are going to check for the wastewater analysis, it is also a uh, quietly different in nature. Okay, in this regard, we also have that whatever the samples which have been analyzed, the containers which have been taken either may be a glass or may be the plastic in nature. Normally, this sampling container where if you wanted to come across for uh, taking off the organic compounds and all, we go for using the glass type of the containers especially for the organic compounds and uh, for the heavy metals and all we go for using we go for using the plastic ok make sure that and all the sampling containers they have to be sterilized if at all if it is used in the case of the biological part of the sampling ok so obviously in the case of the biological we have the different things when i'm going to come across for the sampling containers i'll be going to explain you the details so in the type of the containers always you have to make sure that it has to be filled completely because if it is halfly filled it leads to the oxygen so therefore oxidation or the reduction reaction takes place so there is a chances or the scope for giving the erroneous results. So therefore the analysis whichever that the sample it is being collected from the laboratory or maybe the samples which are being collected from the field itself and transferred to the laboratory the interval of the time or the analysis if you are going to do it then at the later stages there will be some errors ok that we call it as root mean square error some of the regression analysis are also being made for it. Next another important thing it is you need to sterilize it in the case of biological and then you need to have the name ok location and what is the collection mode and then what kind of the sample it is sample type ok and who is the collector all those things all those such particular details are to be filled that is where we call it as procedure for collecting the samples the next important thing it is if at all if you are going to collect the faucet or the tap water itself only in that particular sense you need to let it for at least uh, one minute the tap has to be on ok and then you go for the collection of the sample before collection you need to rinse it ok wherever you go the rinse the container or maybe the collection portion neatly with the sample itself only and avoid the air bubble formations also 
next thing it is if it is in the case of the this is in the for the case of the tap water the, if it is in the case of the moving water obviously if you take this example the sample bottle has to be kept mouth has to be kept in the upstream whereas the hand which is being placed okay the hand which is placed for the collection of the sample it has to be posing or maybe it has to be in a downstream like here you need to collect it okay so this is a particular step or the procedure where it is required okay so mouth of container to be filled in the upstream because if you keep the hand itself only whatever the contaminants which are being present it is sticking on there and then it will lead to the error results so that is the one major thing that we come across especially in the case of the requirements of the sampling and intentionally you need not to go for mixing or the contamination that has to be avoided and meanwhile for that particular usage itself only you need to have a proper labeling proper labeling as well as proper containment containment means what when you have collected the samples you have to place it neatly itself only it should not tend to break or cause any other hazardous or maybe any sorts of health issues also if you are going for any uh, toxic waste or maybe analysis or in the case of the bacteriological or microbiological analysis next procedure for collecting the samples after the requirements you need to have a set of a procedures what are those sample labels so when you collected the water by using a sample cans or maybe a bottles itself only therefore the sample label has to be placed there it has to be stick after the collection it has to be stick with a gum so what is the time representing the name okay and what is the location and then what is the time of it okay when it was being collected and the date also and what is the volume it has to be collected that has to be represented we call it as a field log book whenever you go for any field analysis the first major thing it is you need to have a field log book because you are the person who are going to collect the samples if you need to go for any the composite type of the sampling again at the same place you need to go so therefore you need to have a markings there okay the sampling station we call it as that sampling stations it comprises of where the location and who is the person who has collected all those samples and all and to what is the volume of the samples which are being collected in addition to the collection of the samples next thing it is when which kind of the sample that you have taken up whether it is for the physical chemical or maybe in the case of the microbiological analysis that is a one major thing that you have to come across next chain of custody records you need to have the records earlier if you have collected any samples you need to have the record next another person who has insisting that please do go for the collection of the samples either maybe a canal or maybe in terms of an a uh, waste water channel itself only or maybe a sewer lines or maybe a discharge of the effluent in the industries that you need to go for sampling it or in the case of the ground water you need to take a sample in the case of the surface water like a lakes or a rivers the sampling strategies become different okay that's why the location okay if you have that kind of the location where you have taken the latitude longitude everything it matters also you need to have a field log book so at what depth you have taken if at all if you have are having it and what is the nature of the sample that you have taken whether it is a grab composite or integrated next you have this particular labels and field book will be in the form of the ch chain of custody records so therefore custodian means where you going to bring it into the laboratory get it signed and therefore you have it next thing it is sample analysis request sheet sample analysis request sheet means what are the parameters which are not complying with respect to the standards for that particular things and all i don't know what is the 
nature of the or maybe the quality of the water or maybe in the case of the waste water, I am sending the sample to the laboratory. So therefore, I need to have a requisition sheet because who is the person? What is the nature of the problem that has been existing here? Because sources identification becomes very much important for environmental monitoring and analysis and even for the pollution control. Because the major thing that in the environmental engineering term where we come across in the laboratories and all, first thing is to determine whether the quality of the water, if it has been in terms of a meeting or compliance with respect to standards. The water quality either may be a surface sources or the waste of uh, maybe the subsurface sources or if it is in the case of the waste water municipal or maybe an industrial waste water therefore whatever the samples that you go for collecting it, it has to have all this request sheet that we call it as sample process request sheet. Next sample delivery to the lab as soon as the sample has been collected it has to be delivered to the lab ok that is the one most important and meanwhile here in the chain of the custody you need to have if you have collected more than 5 samples you need to name it like sample number 1, 2, 3 etc what is the date and everything that we call it as a chain of custody records that is an essential. Next thing it is so personal number, lab personal number and lab name number, which kind of the laboratory, everything has to be de dealt with that. Next sample delivery to the lab, sample delivery, how do you go into delivery? Open wise, you bring the sample like open uh, to the atmosphere, no, it should not be open to the atmosphere because some of the, whatever the samples that you go for collecting it, if it is in the field, we call it as an on-site sampling. If it is to be done in the case of the laboratory because each and every parameters has a different sort of an advantages or the limitations to be checked in the field as well as in the laboratory. If you take in the case of an uh, volumetric analysis, you need to come across in the laboratory. Instrumental analysis, huge instrument has to be used for my example BOD or COD and all if you need to determine, laboratory is there. If you want to determine the turbidity or maybe in the case of electrical conductivity, dissolved oxygen, all those things and all. So therefore, you can determine in the on-site itself only. That is the fundamental aspects you need to keep it in the mind. Okay. So sample delivery to the lab has to be either in a polyethylene bottles or maybe in the glass bottles. The next stage that you come across, it is related to the receipt and logging of the samples. They have to be collected and it has uh, to be completely covered either by using any polystyrene uh, foam type of the bead, we call it as a thermocol, okay, that boxes are taken and there it has been utilized or maybe any type of the boxes. The next important thing that we come across is the receipt as well as the logging of the samples, who has brought the samples and at what instance of a day. So, what is the purpose of the sampling when it is already there in the field logbook as well as custody of the records? Next important thing it is to request and deliver the samples to the custodian. That is the most important thing. Okay. And to check that the samples when it is being sealed, it is not being tampered or teared off and it should not be contaminated also. If it is being contaminated, what happens? That means intentionally some person has made a mistake in order to give the fake results. Fake results, if it is being given, therefore you are not going to follow the ethics or what we call it as ethical principles for the sampling condition. So these are the major parts that you come across. Next assignment for analysis. So lab person expert, you need to go for assignment for the analysis. What is that analysis? As I told, we come across three types. One is a gravimetric analysis, volumetric analysis and then we have an instrumental method of analysis. These are the three important things where certain parameters coming under the category of the physical, chemical as well as the biological part 
are to be analyzed. So, therefore, if you wanted to determine the microbes and all, again you need to come back to the laboratory itself only because proper culture, nutrient media has to be added and then taken out. Next, after the analysis of the sample, sometimes what happens in a US and all, they have kept a certain standards or what we call it as an uh, occupational safety and health administration. So, EHS we call it as environmental health and safety. That means samples are not to be mixed which are analyzed. Okay? If you are going to mix all those kind of the samples and all, therefore it leads to the erroneous results that is the first thing. Analyzed part of the samples it contains any acid or maybe water. So, therefore adding water to acid that will lead to the exothermic reaction. Due to the exothermic reaction heat is liberated sometimes whatever the material or the glass apparatus it is used it will tend to crack or burst off there itself only. So, that has to be avoided and there may be the toxic fumes that are also generated. So, these are the certain disposal practices that has to be kept separately there and all a separate bags or maybe we call it as a separate collection chambers are kept in the laboratory and all those materials are either subjected for the treatment or maybe they are incinerated because we go for classifying them as a hazardous waste also in sometimes. Okay? Keeping that in the mind, assignment of the analysis, the so disposal as I have told that it has to be disposed in a proper manner. If you go for a normal disposal, what happens in uh, normal laboratories and all? It is mixed with the normal drainage, whatever the sewage system it is constructed here. But separately, you need to have a treatment. Majority of the laboratories, what they go for doing is they do not go for adopting any disposal. Disposal means throw it into the sink itself only. That is then finished off. Okay, that is only acceptable for the few samples. What about in the case of the mercury and all? If at all any castor and pipes or anything, therefore it will tend to react there. So, leading to the corrosion, crushing and whole pipe system or what we call it as a conduit system has to be completely replaced by the new ones. Therefore, cost increases. This is also one of the literal concerns in the disposal. Okay? So, these are the procedures, sample labels and then field logbook containing all those details, chain of the custody of the records and then sample analysis request sheet. We have sample delivery to the lab asking the receptor also for the log part of the samples. So, so and so samples or I have taken 20 samples and give it to the laboratory. Which are the samples? What are the locations? I need to go through the details. Simply I cannot go for analysis, isn't it? So, that is the one thing. Next, consciousness of a person also plays a very important role because immediately after the sampling, he need to seal it off and immediately place a tag or a label for it. Next, receipt and the logging of the samples in the laboratory that has to be done, then assignment for analysis and disposal. Similarly, for you people, you need to go through this part of an procedures for the sample collections. You have a cans, you need to collect it properly to the full extent, no half part of the sampling, only available is this much and all, no, otherwise use the small volumes. So, the, in terms of and volumes, we have a different issues also. What is that? Let us get to know in the next stages. So, we have come across requirements as well as procedure for the collection of the samples. The next thing it is sampling containers. As earlier I have stated, glass containers or maybe the plastic containers are utilized. Glass containers are utilized in the case where we come across for determining either the BOD or COD or any other organic materials except, except pesticides or fungicides and eventually the volatile organic compound also. If it is in the case of the pesticides and all, so you need to come across for some of the plastic itself only because uh, in some of the heavy metals and all what happens for the glass and all they go for the leaching or maybe any of the metals if you take sodium or maybe silica itself only 
that will tend to react with the glass material thereby the chemical reaction takes place when the chemical reaction takes place it may lead either to the precipitation of the samples also or may be leading to any of the interchain reactions leading to the salt formation also so such kind of the things are to be eliminated okay the next thing that we come across it is the plastic bottles normally a cylindrical part or maybe it is coming in a various different polygonal shape as well as the sizes also the cans also or maybe it is related to the water bottle type that normally go for using it or maybe aspirator type also we have it so there are different types of the plastic samples which are been that means containers which are available and in addition to that we also have a colored containers this colored containers are to be utilized we call it as a amber type of the materials okay amber type of the materials so which are dark in nature for photosynthesis analysis or maybe in order to avoid the any photochemical reactions when the sam from a source itself only as soon as possible they need to be delivered to the lab okay same thing here also when you go for the delivery to the lab it has to be delivered in the case of the water okay one or two days fine in the case of the waste water within one day itself only it has to be transferred if you going to take in the case of the remote places what is the next thing it is so therefore you need to go for the preservation the next step that you need to come across okay so amber type of the material colored containers are utilized here next thing it is whenever you go for taking the containers for the collection of the samples rinse the container with the sample itself only and do not go for making any mixing of the samples from one container to another container therefore that is an uh, blunder or a mistake that is been done and please make sure that in the laboratory analysis whenever you go for doing the sample analysis you have to be very much careful okay next thing it is preservation as well as handling of the samples preservation or handling it mainly refers to the two major aspect that we call it as a sample storage what is that first one is nature of the sample it are different types of the samples when we go for the collection some of them they are highly reactive in nature some of them are moderately reactive some are slowly reactive in nature based on the process kinetics or what we call it as a natural kinetic type of the systems that we go for having it that particular stages we have the sample storage system or the analysis so mainly depending upon the nature of the sample changes the nature of the sample changes is mainly based upon either biodegradation okay when it is being subjected for the biodegradation or what we call it as even the oxidation precipitation so likewise we have the escape of the volatile organic compound so these things are the literal problem arising so therefore nature of the sample it will tend to change if you going to keep it over a period of the time okay that analysis also you can do if you have a clinical observation in this you can determine what is the nature of the sample okay mainly the storage and preservation it depends upon this and as i have mentioned that time interval between the analysis the time interval between the analysis it has to be a short time interval it should not be a long time interval if the time so whatever that you have analyzed so therefore it will be having a lesser accuracy or it will tend to give the apparent value than the precision values or maybe the accurate value that you have to see that that you have required or you have predicted that okay that is a one major thing that we come across especially in the case of the sampling changes okay in order to retard this 
rate of the reaction mainly basis of the kinetics because in the next step we shall go for uh, telling what is meant by the kinetics and all we shall get to know. Next time interval between the analysis as I have told that shorter the time interval your accuracy will be good. If it is longer in nature so you are going to get an apparent value. Especially this happens in the case of the waste water. Okay, water it is ok, therefore you have a slight preservation involved. In order to retard the rate of the reaction, so there are different methods that means that is a major purpose of the preservation. Either if you decrease the temperature, we can go for the preserving it that means the rate of the reaction that means forward reactions or backward reactions that we have ok that will be stopped ok and it will be slightly retarded and for that purpose either you can go for decreasing the temperature which is an external factor and dry ice has to be prevented. You can go for using either the crushed part of the ice cubes and all for packing of the samples and all when you have collected or if it is there is a huge amount of the time for bringing the source of the sample into the laboratory. So therefore, you need to go for the preservation on spot itself only that thing has to be done or if you do not have any refrigerations all those things and all. So therefore, you need to go for using the crushed part of the ice. Sometimes you need to go for using the temperature to be slightly reaching to the freezing state, but should not be completely freezing by using the dry ice and all. Because what happens if it is being freezed, therefore the breakages of the container takes place especially in the case of either in the glass also. Therefore, that has to be prevented. Next another important thing that you need to come across is related to the chemical preservatives. Chemical preservatives is mainly limited with respect to the pH control ok, controlling of the pH whether it has to be in an uh, alkaline or maybe in a neutral or maybe in an acidic in nature ok, that is a one stretch of the things. Next thing also in order to retard the hydrolysis reaction also, so chemical preservatives are also utilized. Okay. So, the term preservation it refers to storage of the samples for a longer duration of the time in order to curb out or what we call it as in order to see that the changes in the sample does not take place even to an maximum extent also okay, or even for the minimal extent also that we call it as a nature of the sample changes with respect to the storage. But is it completely possible? No. Then why we need to go for this kind of the analysis if we do not have it? For each and every th instances we cannot go and sample at the spot itself only that is a one major thing because we cannot go for taking all those laboratory equipments into the river or in near to the lake itself only then operate there, no it is not possible. Maybe it will be possible in the future part of the days on the development of some of the electronic equipments or the devices which tends to be in an on spot or we call it as a on site measurement ok. The term preservation it normally refers to retarding the nature of the sample changes that has been taking place. And one more thing that you have to keep it in the mind especially proper preservation is to be required ok. When you are taking the case of the water preservation is different in the case of the waste water also. In the case of the waste water you have the physical chemical as well as the biological also and if at all if you are going to go for using in this is related to the domestic if it is in the case of the industrial waste. So, these things are to be taken into an account for preservation 
and there is a list of tables which will shown in the next part how much days are to be kept for the preservation what is the expiry date or what we call it as a shell life the time period where the sampling changes does not takes place okay that we call it as a shell life in these part you need to have the preservation either for the microbiological analysis or maybe for the chemical analysis for both the th uh, there is three also or even the physical parameter analysis also okay so you can control the physical as well as the chemical somewhat extent but biologically you cannot able to control it only some of the neutralizations but what happens biologically if you wanted to control by adding the chemicals or any other things it tends to retard the growth of the microbes also there is a one thing it is required if completely retards the growth of the microbes means not required itself only isn't it keep it in the mind so let us stay for that particular usages also so all over the things stability is also a major concern so therefore preservation has to be a satisfactory in nature okay water waste water as well as even in the case of the industrial waste water also so now all together if you're going to take it you have deal with a sampling manual automatic and sorbent type of the sampling it is also applicable even after the preservation what is the stages that you come across first is sample collection having all those things then sample delivery to the lab sample analysis and then disposal these are the practices that we come across in the laboratory okay whether you go for taking any water laboratory in the treatment plant or maybe a waste water treatment plant if you take there also the laboratory setup are be made and there they go for a literal analysis on a daily basis daily they need to collect all the samples and all from the effluent treatment units or waste water treatment units or maybe in the case of the water treatment units also all together i am speaking it okay that is to be kept or made to see that the things are in a normal manner okay so okay, now one important thing it is i need to indicate here glass you go for it plastic heavy metals and all okay and uh, some of the organics we come across here it is some of organics are uh, compatible except which is not compatible are the vocs pesticide all those herbicide fungicides all those things they are the one of the major criteria poly tetra fluoroethyl is also one of the type of the liners which has been utilized in the containers also nowadays normally they go for using the plastic type of the containers because glass type of the containers though they are been utilized so only if you go for the determination of the heavy metals and all now also there are certain types of the containers so you can also see in the pictures what are the different types of the containers that we have you come across in the environmental quality monitoring as well as in the analysis also okay so in this laboratory environmental engineering part these plays a very important roles starting from the sampling requirements what is the procedure containers and preservation and handling of the samples i think you people have gone through all this sort of an aspect and i hope so you people will get to know the concepts in a clear basis if there are any sorts of the doubts i'll be going to take up in the next part of the session still then stay tuned for it and look upon for the next session thank you one and all